Hi guys, this is Bill with Media Unlocked. We're back in the beautiful 3O Studios in Lexington, Kentucky on a gorgeous spring day. The sun is up, the grass is green, and it is just gorgeous. The daffodils are popping and David got sunburned. Hey, say hi David, he's behind the camera today. Hey guys. And we're gonna talk today about the 35 millimeter F1.4 DG HSM art lens from Sigma. It has a price point of about 1200 bucks. Our friends from B&H were kind enough to loan this to me for a month to test it out and give you my feeling on whether or not you need this lens. So let's start off with the specs just to, well, just to show you that it is the art. I really like the way these things look. They've got a great appearance to them with their new packaging. But the specs on this thing, just to tell you about it, it's got a great angle of view, 63.4 degrees. It has a 30 centimeter focusing distance. Uh, that's roughly a foot. There are 13 elements in 11 groups, and that is big, okay? There are a lot of glass pieces in this particular lens. So there's one F low density, FLD lens, and four special low density elements. There are two aspherical elements, super multi-layer coating, which is going to minimize flare and ghosting. Like the other Sigma art lenses, it has a nine blade diaphragm. The autofocus mode group, that HSM, is unbeatable. It is quiet, it is fast. It is just, you're just not gonna beat it. Nothing is any better than that. It weighs in at one and a half pounds. And one and a half pounds is a little heavy for a 35 millimeter lens, so you're gonna have to get used to it, okay? So how did I use this lens? The majority of my shooting, it was studio lens work. Well, see, there's a reason for that. Back in the day when I learned how to take pictures originally, it was all film, and I had a Canon AE-1, and it had a 50 millimeter lens on it. Well, in those days, there wasn't any real way to correct for lens distortion. So I learned a bias. I learned that you basically don't use a lens less than 50 millimeters unless you're willing to accept buildings that look like they're curving in like this or whatever lens distortions you find with less than 50 millimeter lenses. In the old darkroom, there really wasn't a good way to fix any of that. So it looked really weird. And I learned that 50 millimeters means that's where you don't get distortion. Now guys, that's not true anymore, okay? And my mind knows that's not true, but my heart still says 50 millimeters is your limit. So what I've been doing is I've been spending a lot of time shooting lenses that are less than 50 millimeters. And I've been playing in Photoshop, playing on the computer, and trying to convince myself that a 35 millimeter lens is a really, really good addition to my arsenal. I don't have one in there. Right now, I do have a Tamron 24 to 70. It's what I use for close, uh, close lens work, anything under 50 millimeters. And it's been suiting my needs quite well. But hopefully, I have a different opinion after, after using this lens. Let me tell you, I use this a lot for street photography over the last month. I would go downtown, I would shoot, I would take pictures up close, I would look for the angle. When I was down in Tampa a few weeks ago, I was exhibiting in a show for a weekend down there. So I went down because it's always kind of cool to see your pictures up on the wall. And I used it for one particular shot where I wanted to use the 35 millimeter distortions to my advantage. I'm going to pop that up here just to let you see it right now. And you'll notice that the distortion isn't bad at all, but it gave me a great angle of view to kind of capture what I was looking for. These were memorial paving stones on the sidewalk down on Ybor City in Tampa that we were there to shoot cigar culture and just general street photography. Last night, I went to the Veterans Memorial in Frankfort, Kentucky. Now the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Frankfort is kind of cool and it's really unique. It is a huge sundial. And the sundial is, was designed by computer programmers in one of the first attempts to use a computer to design capturing time and motion. What they did was use computer assistance to have the point of the shadow of the sundial point to the name of all of the Vietnam veterans who lost their lives during that war. Now, it's not exact, but at the date and time of their death, the shadow 
gets really close to their name. It's very moving. It is really cool. And I've never gone down to the memorial to photograph it before, and I wanted to try it with a 35 millimeter lens. Now, I did have some fun. I discovered I was there at the wrong time of the day to capture the names. You really needed to be a morning shot for that, and I was looking for a sunset shoot, so I got there at the wrong time. But I did shoot the shadow. I did try to take a picture that was kind of cool of the memorial with the Capitol building of the state of Kentucky in the background. I was hoping to capture a sunset, but the colors didn't cooperate. And I was hoping to capture the Capitol building late at night, but the legislature is not in session, and I guess the governor forgot to pay the electric bill, so they never lit up the building last night. Oh, well. It was a good shoot, however, even though I didn't find what I was looking for, because it taught me how to use that 35 millimeter lens better than anything else I've ever done. Now, I used it in the studio a lot. I was working on a project of trying to recreate a feel of old Helmut Newton photography. I was working with a young model named Portia Green, and Portia and I focused on using the 35 millimeters to create the feel of power, to try to create the idea that you can use a combination of lens and camera angle to really create the feel. So what are my general conclusions about this lens? I like the 35 millimeter lens. I need to learn how to play with it more because it is different. The combination of the short focal length and the angles often creates a feeling that I wasn't looking for in my photography. So I really need to work on that. I'm going to keep pushing myself to shoot under 50 millimeters so that I can get past that bias and find a whole new edge to my photography. This is a fantastic 35 millimeter lens. If you are looking for a 35, I really recommend this one, pure and simple. It's a Sigma Art. It is sharp. It is fast on its autofocus. Now, one thing of note is that this lens does not have an image stabilizer. That is a little different. There are a lot of lenses out there at 35 millimeters that do have an image stabilizer built into it. And that's something that, well, you're going to have to weigh the value of when you make your purchasing decision. 35 millimeters is not a hard lens to shoot. The old rule was very simple. You keep your shutter speed one over your length. So a 35 millimeter, you could shoot this at 1 30th of a second. It's not that hard to hold it steady for 1 30th of a second. However, if you're the kind of photographer that has an issue with camera shake, you do need to pay attention to the fact that this one does not have the stabilizer built in. It is a great lens. I really recommend it. It's sharp as a tack. It performs beautifully. You really ought to give this one serious consideration if you're looking at a 35 millimeter lens. And I am going to go out and play with it just a little bit more before I send it back to B&H because I want some more practice with it. It was a fun lens. So let's go out. Let's both exercise our shutter fingers and I'll see you next time. You guys have made it this far. If you want to check out our newest video, it will be right here. If you want to check out the product, it will be down here. If you do happen to click on it and purchase it, it does give us a little bit of commission and that helps me a lot keep making these videos. And of course, guys, right down below, go and leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, follow along. We'll catch you next time.